Well, since our first defeat of the season to the preseason favourites in Energy Cop Bus in yesterday's episode, thankfully we have got on track in four games since then today. We face a tough task taking on the team currently in third on the table in Kalzajina. But before then, in our rematch against Energy Cop Bus, which now will happen in tomorrow's episode, I missed it yesterday, but it's our first Leipzig derby of the save as we take on Kimi Leipzig. It's our first derby day here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. <laughs> Welcome back to the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today in episode 4. As I said, slight change of plan on what we did say. What had happened at the end of yesterday's episode, we are still going to take on Carl Zeiss Gina away from home. But that will be the second game of today's episode. Because as I said in the intro before then, it is our first Leipzig derby of the save. As we do host Kimi Leipzig down in ninth on the table. So if you're looking forward to those two games... In today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as mentioned in the intro as well, in yesterday's episode, we did play two tough games in the regional league, and Nord Austin did suffer our first defeat of the season to the team currently, and second on the table in Energy Cop Bus. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Still feels like that one was a harsh result with the way that that game did play out based on the highlights that we did see. But thankfully off the back of that, we did have quite a kind run coming up in the league during the month of October. First up, we took on the team all the way down at the bottom of the table and looking Belda thankfully picked up a 3-0 win getting on the score sheet just before half time through Jamal Ziani, he also got a goal in the second half, as did Leon Hanker, and that made sure that we did pick up a 3-0 win. Off the back of that, a little bit closer away from home as we took on Bubblesburg, but thankfully 3-2. We did concede two goals after going 3-0 up early in the second half. Thankfully, did hold on there to pick up three points. Then slightly more disappointing against Victoria 18-89. We scored early, but also conceded in the first half and somehow did not grab an equaliser. In that one, if we go and have a look at the stats from this game, you will see we definitely should have picked up a win in this game. The only shot on target did find its way into the back of the net, but unfortunately, just the point there away from home. But thankfully, it was not a loss and off the back of that back at home. We did refine our winning form with a 2 1 win against Musselwitz. Off the back of that first game against the bottom of the table team in looking at the results since then have been a little closer than what they should have been, especially that draw with Victoria 1889. But thankfully, those results do mean we are still on top of the table, six points clear of Energy Cop Bus, and eight points clear against the second opposition that we do play in today's episode. In Carl Zeiss Gina, but first up today, as I said, is our first Leipzig derby of the save, not against the team that we are looking to overthrow here in Leipzig and RB. Leipzig's still going to be a fair while, I would say, if we do take those guys on, especially as for some reason we are not in a cup competition all the way down in the fourth tier of German football just yet for the season. All we need to focus on is the league and trying to win it to get promoted up to the free league. But Kimi Leipzig, they currently sit mid table. Six wins from 14 games, 21 points. We are 12 points ahead of them based on our form so far this season. You'd like to think that this is a team that we can beat before we do take on one of the tougher teams that we will face for the rest of this season. And Carl Zeiss Gina away from home, currently in third on the table. If we can pick up wins in both of today's games, that could mean we grab a nice little break on Energy Cop Bus going into that first game, which will be coming up in tomorrow's episode, that rematch against hopefully. By that stage, still the only team who have been in us so far this season. And that will mark the halfway point of the season. If we could grab some points in both these games today, even if we lose that one first up tomorrow, we should still be on top of the table at the halfway point of this first season in the regional league in Ordost here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Just a few things that I forgot to cover off during the course of yesterday's episode. It was regarding transfers. Of course, we did sign a new backup striker in Kevin Zizek. We also signed a few youngsters who I didn't show you guys in and around that. So we'll show you guys those ones now as we do make sure that this is sorted out 
by the most recent date. David Alem was one of them. He is a promising left winger, three and a half star potential. Isn't on much of a wage, but that was a signing from our under 19s manager. And Finn Speckman, we did pick up as a player who did come to the club on trial. He's a young striker at 18 years old with quite a bit of potential, four and a half stars, only one and a half star current ability. But at 18 years old, thought he was worth picking up for the future. And with those signings, mainly the one that we did bring up in yesterday's episode for the new backup striker in Kevin Zizek, it does mean now we can't really do any more transfers for the rest of the season unless we do get something happening, which does prop up our wage budget because there is only £13 left. So I think the squad that we've got here at the moment is going to be the one that will have to carry us throughout the rest of the season. We could get some more wage budget opening up if we do get rid of a player like Sasha Pfeffer because he is on a wage of £1,500 a week, which is quite considerable compared to the rest of the squad here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, but to be fair to him, quite an important player, as I said over the first few episodes, with his free kick taking, so hopefully he continues to play well, but going into next season, he will be 37 years old, at that stage, might be a time to let go of him on that high wage, hopefully we can find a better player who's a bit younger, and also doesn't want to be paid quite as much, but as I said, first up today, it's our first Leipzig derby of the save, taking on Kimi Leipzig, and then off the back of that, the tougher game you'd imagine, travelling away to Kalzai's Gina, albeit for the first of these games, the Star B, we are going to be doing it without some players, because unfortunately, they picked up suspensions in our most recent game, those players, Malik Saluski, our left back, he got suspended for too many yellow cards, and the same case applies for Lucas Search, our left-sided centre-back, so it does mean slight change on the bench for this one, Lampdi and Vufak are the players who will cover both centre-back and wing-back from the bench. And in terms of starting, David Urban comes onto that left-hand side centre-back in place of Search, and also Zimmer will start over Saluski at left-back. But apart from that, we are at full strength. And we'll go into this one in an attacking frame of mind, because our opposition not too good going into this game, and it has worked a little bit better in that most recent patch of games that we have played against teams lower down the table. So hopefully we can pick up three points here and maybe even extend that gap on those teams in and behind us before we do take on those ones in our next two games of the season. But we'll come back shortly and hopefully pick up a win in our first Leipzig derby of the save as we take on Kimi Leipzig from the Bruno Park Stadium. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. We ran through ours before with those suspensions changes on the left-hand side of our defence, but we come into this one in good form off the back of that loss. In yesterday's episode, Kimi Leipzig, they are playing a 4-2-3-1 to be fair, in decent form before their most recent outing, but still based on league position. This is a game in derby. You would expect us to be winning. And it's only taken four minutes for the first highlight of this one. And already we look like we are on the attack with a thrown inside the final third. Pepe here makes his way inside the box. Tries to curve that one top right corner. But to be fair, did look like that one went well wide of the post. So an early chance, but still nil all coming up to the 10 minute mark. And nearly inside the last five minutes of this first half, well and truly on the front foot in this game. But we do have a corner here, still trying to make sure that we do open the scoring. It is headed clear, but we do get the ball here on the edge of the box. Heinke lines one up from a fair way out. That one whizzes past that left hand upright, nearly sneaks in that far post, but unfortunately still cannot find the back of the net, albeit it looks like there might be a bit of action happening here late in this first half. Ziani gets in behind, tucks that one away, but I do just see there the linesman on this near side. He has stuck his flag up. Ziani was offside, and it does look like we might be going into half time, still locked up. At nil all, which is a bit disappointing, as you can tell by the stats. Well and truly, been on top of this one, but unfortunately, have not put the ball in the back of the net legally. Just those three highlights, one goal. It was scored for an offside, otherwise not quite hitting the target. Ernesto picked up a late yellow card in that first half. Savufak can come on for him, but otherwise, fairly happy with how we are doing. But we'll tell the boys there's certainly some room for improvement, and hopefully, we can get on the score sheet in the second half in this first Leipzig derby of the save. And it's only taken a few minutes of the second half for the first highlight of it, and yet again we are on the attack trying to play a ball over the top there for Ziani, but the Kimi Leipzig players there are able to deal with that danger. Abdulamane there passes that one back to Zimmer, starts to make his way forward. It's bad at the back there, it falls to Ricardo Grimm, gets some help there from the underside of the crossbar, but thankfully this time 
We do hit the target. He's actually scored a few goals so far this season, looking like quite a useful midfielder in that central midfield attacking duty alongside Abdullah Mane, who also had a hand in the build-up. Bad defensive error there. Ricardo Grimm does get in behind as they are worried about our striker in Jamal Ziani. And finally, we do take a 1-0 lead here in this Leipzig derby. And very short off the back of that opening goal, we are now down the other end, really for the first time so far in this game, as Kimi Leipzig do have a throw, and they do keep the ball here for now, albeit take their time trying to play their way out from the back, try and pop that one over the top, but Issa Dogen does come out to claim that outside of the box. Thankfully, just plays that one to his right back in Vufak, and we eventually try and make our way out from the back, just like Kimi Leipzig were doing in that most recent highlight, and hopefully... We can make it a double sooner rather than later and grab a cushion goal. Atilgen still doing a good job at left wing for us. Of course, he will stay there now with no more transfer budget to worry about. Grimm gets brought down inside the box. It's blown up for a penalty. So Ricardo Grimm has his hands all over this game so far. Got that previous goal. Now earns us a penalty, which Sasha Fepa will put away. The goalkeeper tried to come forward to save that one. But nonetheless, he didn't get near it because Fepa picked out that bottom right corner, and there is a cushion goal that we were after. We were building up nicely in that first half, but didn't put the ball in the back of the net. Thankfully, that has changed so far in the second half. 2-0 coming up to the hour mark. And in fact, while we are here, it might be time for us to make our first substitution here, or at least our first one of the second half. We did make one earlier with Ernesto having picked up a yellow card, but a player in our team on a yellow card is Leon Henke, also Eagles Z is on a yellow card, but of course that would mean we had to bring on Lampty on an appearance fee, which we don't want to trigger. We'll take off Henke sitting on that yellow card so he doesn't get suspended. Pitlicka will come on for him with a half hour left off the back of us going 2-0 up. And just inside the last 20 minutes of this one, yet again we are on the attack with a throw and get inside the final third. We try and play that one into the mix, but it is cut out there from one of the opposition. And maybe here they get a chance to do something on the counter attack. They find some space here. Down this left-hand side through Mask. Gets him behind his man there. Somehow keeps that ball in tight space. Down the left-hand side back to Went over the top. They get him behind our defense there. A bit slow at the back. But thankfully this time, Issa Dogen does make a good save. Did feel like there they might grab a goal back. It's been quite common. The team grabs a goal back even though they don't have a great amount of shots in a game. And while we are here off the back of that save, we'll make two more substitutions with players down to Red Hearts. Weigel will come on for Abdullah Mane, and also will take off Atilgan for Don Blower, and also actually Ziani only going okay. Kevin Zizek can come on for him, so that's all our subs used. Still 2 nil up for around 10 minutes left. And just about to into the last few minutes of this game, in the end, it's been a pretty comfortable 2 0 win that we should be picking up, albeit one more highlight in this one. As you saw in the first half, we had some chances, but couldn't put the ball in the back of the net legally. Thankfully, a bit better in the second half, largely thanks to Ricardo Grimm, Got the first goal and then earned us a penalty, which Sasha Pfeffer did put away. And we are on the attack here with these players off the bench getting involved nicely here. Weigel plays that one forward to Zizek. Takes that one around the goalkeeper. Takes a bit of a deflection, but thankfully still finds its way into the back of net. And Kevin Zizek gets his first goal on camera since he has joined us here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Of course, he did score a hat-trick in a game where Ziani was injured before we did play those ones in yesterday's episode, that one. A little bit of a weak shot, but thankfully took it around the goalkeeper. Still finds its way into the back of the net. And it does mean that in the end, we pick up a pretty comfortable 3-0 win. Albeit, as I said, in that first half, we probably should have got on the score sheet. But thankfully, made up for that in the second. Some of our substitutes coming up good there. That goal, that last one, which we did score. But as I said, Ricardo Grimm, very good in the early stages of that second half. And it does mean we are still six points clear of Energy Cop Bus on top of the table, but coming up next we take on the team just below those guys away from home in Carl Zeiss Jena. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode, a first versus third clash away from home. There are Carl Zeiss Jena also playing a 4-2-3-1 coming to this one in some nice form as do we. We've made some changes at the back. Those players suspended for the first game make their way back into the staying 11. It does mean that Urban as well as Zimmer Drop down to the bench. We are back to our first choice 11. Hopefully we can continue this good form off the back of that loss in yesterday's episode and stay on top of the table. We will anyway, but hopefully pick up three more points here as we take on Kalzai Shina. 
And yet again, we get an early highlight in this one. Six minutes in it as a goal kick, or at least a free kick there in our favour, taken by our goalkeeper, albeit the opposition in the white today. We'll win that one back, but a bit of a loose touch there. And Saluski back in the team at left back, plays that one back to Search, also back in the team alongside him. At centre back, we get something going here down this left-hand side of Tilgan in a lot of space just outside the box. That takes a deflection, that ball. He was going to try and play him, but thankfully we do win that one back. Now, Abdullah Mane makes his way inside the box back there for a Tilgan. Takes a big deflection off a defender. That is a very fortunate goal, but a Tilgan has been so good for us so far this season. Out on left wing, it was an area I thought we'd need to improve, but thankfully he's doing a very good job for us because we don't have the wages to improve that area these days. Big deflection there, the defender gets his boot up and just bundles that one into the bottom left corner when the goalkeeper probably would have saved that. So a very fortunate goal, but this time we go 1-0 up early. And we make our way forward to the half hour mark for our next highlight. Free kick there to Calvais Jenner. And that is a terrible tackle there from Jamal Ziani. And he has been shown a straight red card. And that will make this game a bit more difficult. Now we might actually have to drop our mentality down from positive potentially to something like balanced or cautious. We did drop it back from attacking from that previous game with our opposition in this one being a much better team. Now, usually when I've played a 4 3 3 recently on FM and we have got a red card, the player I can take off is the defensive midfielder. In this case, both our more forward midfielders are on an attacking duty. So Ricardo Grimm can play DM, Abdullah Mane can't. So he can come off the Zizek and we'll just make sure that those defensive midfielders are both on a defensive duty. Grimm now can be a deep line playmaker. And we'll see if we can hold on to this lead now that we are down to 10 men. And only a few minutes shy of half time, we are still hanging on here to our 1 0 lead despite the fact we are down to 10 men. We've also dropped back to a balanced mentality, but the opposition here start to make their way forward. Bit of a lucky deflection. They take a shot there from outside the box. It does force Dogan into an attempted save, but thankfully, like at one of our shots in that previous game from Heinke, that one does just go wide. And thankfully, despite the fact that we have been down to 10 men for around about 15 minutes, we do hold on to that 1-0 lead, which was grabbed by a Tilgan rather fortunately early in this game. But obviously, since then, now we are down 2-2 midfielders, but not too happy with how things changed off the back of going down to 10 men. So what I might do here is go to a positive mentality but put our wing backs on a defensive duty also. We might try Zizek in a deep line fall on support. Might just mean he drops back deeper instead of being an advanced forward on an attacking duty. So hopefully that does mean we might look a little bit more solid defensively for the second half, because no doubt at some stage, the opposition should be grabbing a goal back in this one against 10 men, but that was not a good first half because of that red card, but that goal that we did score early does mean that we will get the second half back underway for a 1-0 lead. But can we hang on down to 10 men? And about 10 minutes into the second half, we do get the first highlight here as we are now on that positive mentality. But as I said, a few more players on support and defensive duties. No one on an attacking duty. But hopefully it does mean we're a bit more solid while we are down to 10 men. Just taking our time here as we do look to play out from the back. Ideally, no soft giveaways of the ball. And we can just grab a cushion goal somehow, which might give us a slim chance here of actually going home with all three points. I do expect the opposition, Carl Zeiss Jenner, to grab a goal back at some stage during the second half, being the team currently third on the table. But we're doing what we want here at the moment, just holding the ball nicely. But as I say that, we try and play one over the top of Tilgan there. Does nearly get in behind, but can't quite get there. Might have been paying there for moving Zizek onto a deep line forward on support. And Noffel down the other end with a wonderful chip over Dogan and goal our defense there. Not great, but still that's a really good finish. And it does mean that as we suspected, the opposition have grabbed a goal back. It's a really good ball there. And unfortunately, Eagle Zeta did not read it well. It's very well finished though over the top of Dogan. And now we might be in a spot of bother with a half hour left. It's one all and maybe not the worst idea to actually move Zizek back to an attacking forward or an advanced forward. On attack, just seeing as in that most recent highlight, he might have actually got that ball usually if he was on that advanced board duty. So we'll move him back to that, and maybe that will help us get back in front, albeit it will be tough down to 10 men now that Kalzai Shina have grabbed an equalizer. 
And very shortly off the back of that goal, which they did get back yet again, they were on the attack there. We do clear our lines, but they win the ball back, as you would expect, with that extra man. And yet again, nice pass there as they do get in behind Kloss there with a shot, but thankfully blast that one over the bar. But certainly the opposition here at home with that extra man now starting to get on top of us it is 1-0 as we do enter the last 25 minutes. I was just thinking there about making a change, but a highlight has started with a goal kick in our favour. Thankfully, we do keep the ball. Hopefully, that stays that way. I've also gone back to a balanced mentality off the back of conceding that goal. A point from this game would actually be quite good given the circumstances. Unfortunately, poor pass from us there, though, down our left-hand side. And it is now Carl Zeichina who will look to hit the front. Wolf now makes his way down that right-hand side, plays the ball in the mix of the air. It falls to Simic. It's a bit fortunate. Dog in there gets a good touch on that one to put it out for a corner. But while we are here, a Tilgan has gone down to a red heart. So Don Blover can come on for him, but also just feel like we might need to be a bit more positive in this situation because at the moment we are well and truly on the back foot. So both our midfielders and our fullbacks can go onto a support duty instead of that defensive one that we did move them to at half time and hopefully it might give us a chance to get back into this game this corner is still going to take place off the back of that previous highlight hopefully we can deal with this danger indeed we do still want all inside the last 20 minutes and with 15 minutes to go in this one we do have a free kick here in a bit of an interesting spot straight down the middle but for some reason the one of the Carl Zeichina players in Lamal commits a handball inside the box that's exactly what we want in a situation like this down to 10 men for the second game in a row. FIFA has a chance here to grab a goal from the spot. The goalkeeper goes the wrong way. And thankfully, he's proven that he's worth that £1,500 a week at the moment. Two goals in today's episode. And that one could be a really big one down to 10 men against third in the league away from home. Somehow, despite the fact that we've been playing with 10 men for around about 45 minutes now, we are back in front by two goals to one. And while we are here... Might be time for us to make our last few substitutions with quite a few players out there down to red hearts. What we are going to do here, both our midfielders are down to red hearts, but Ernesto can slot in there. So that does mean that Ricardo Grimm can come off for Zimmer. And as well as that, we'll take off FIFA for Ogbidian. As well as that, Pippica makes his way onto the field as well to make sure that both of our defensive midfielders no longer on a red heart. But hopefully now we can hold on to this lead, having gone 2 1 up with 15 minutes left, albeit still down to 10 men. And only a few minutes off the back of that penalty, now we have a corner here, which is a dangerous area for us to try and grab another goal, but unfortunately, Pitlicka the far post puts that one over the bar, but thankfully, starting to get back on top of our opposition, even though we are down to 10 men, we are inside the last 10 minutes, and now there is one more highlight here, as we are about to enter the last five minutes of this game. We do keep position Ernesto these days in that defensive midfield role, plays that one out to Zimmer, and he makes his way forward, Good run there from our new right back on the pitch. That one somehow finds its way inside the mixer. And Kevin Zizek for the second game in a row comes off of the bench, albeit this time a lot earlier, thanks to that red card. To Ziani, tucks that one away. And it does look like we are going to pick up a big win here away from home against Ferdinand League after picking up a fairly early red card at the half hour mark. Through Ziani, it did feel like there around the hour mark we were well and truly on the back foot, but thankfully made some changes off the back of that. And we are now 3-1 up. Does feel like the opposition here have been FM'd a little bit, but thankfully we adapted well, having suffered that red card. And that now makes it 3-1 late. Don Brother there, good work to just clear that ball away with only two more minutes left of added time. Hopefully we can hold on now with that two-goal cushion. If it was one goal... Would be a little less confident, but this is a big result to be fair. A draw even would have been a good result having gone down to 10 men during that first half. Good work there from us though to stop an attack from the opposition. As you can tell by that match momentum, we have got on the front foot late in this game and thankfully made the most of it, putting the ball in the back of near late free kick, which Saluski takes his time over. Eagles either heads that one down for some reason, Piplica. Might have been offside, which was the reason he did not try and bundle that one over the line. But a late chance here for Carl Zeiss Gina to get one more goal back and maybe make things a bit nervy for us late. But Don Blover here, some really good hustle late off of the bench. Both wingers have done a good job since coming on. Of course, Ogbiddy for the penalty scorer 
and FIFA for the second game in a row. We get on the attack yet again, and Kunz here will try and pump this deep, no doubt, at very short notice, try and get them back in this game with only a few seconds left, but thankfully Search heads that one back to Issa Dogen, and that should probably do it with only a few seconds left, and as I've said a few times now, that will end up being a very good win, our best one so far, I'd say, of this save, considering we went down to 10 men with our hour left and still came from one all to pick up a 3-1 win, that penalty to Pfeffer, a big turning point, and off the back of that, Zizek poked one home with only a few minutes left, and despite the fact we were down to 10 men for an hour, we pick up a 3-1 win, they'll feel a bit harsh about that one, Carl Zaishina, based on the stats, but thankfully, some good fight shown from our boys, and we somehow find a way to pick up a 3-1 win. We'll tell them that we were happy with their work. Probably would have been a bit nicer there to give some sort of reminder not to lose their discipline, but still that is a good result. And as you can see, it does mean still six points clear of energy cop bus. That could be a big game if we can win that one at the start of tomorrow's episode, because that would give us a really nice buffer at the halfway mark of the season of nine points. And you'd like to think from there, having already played energy cop bus twice, we can finish off the job and earn promotion to the free league at the first time of asking, but that is a big win to good ones in today's episode, beating Shimi Leipzig in the Leipzig derby, and then a 3-1 win with 10 men away at Carl Zeiss Jena. And back in the inbox of the back of those two games in today's episode, as I said, two good wins, especially that second one where we were down to 10 men for most of that game, but thankfully still found a way to pick up a 3-1 win and stay six points clear of Energy Cop Bus on top of the table. It does mean now six games unbeaten since we did suffer that loss to that team in yesterday's episode, but it does also mean for the first one, that big game tomorrow, we are going to have to start Zizek. Ziani will be banned. Don't think there's much point in appealing that decision. That tackle was a bit of a shocker, but thankfully still found a way to pick up a win. Two wins in today's episode. If you enjoyed those, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this new series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well tomorrow. As I said, we'll come back for a rematch from yesterday's episode, this one away from home. The only team so far this season who have beaten us, and if we can beat them away from home, that will put us in a great position to hopefully be winning the title, even though we will only be halfway through the season, but we take on Energy Cop Bus away from home, and off the back of that, our next game, also a quite big one as we do take on Shemnitza, they are currently fourth on the table, and off the back of that, our fixtures, for a little while, do start to get a bit easier looking, so those are two big games coming up, right off the back of the two that we played in today's episode, those will be coming up in tomorrow's, and hopefully we can stay on top of the table with a decent points gap as well, and until then, thank you very much for watching, Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Thought I could do this, left through the sadness. Uh oh, uh oh. Don't know how.